All right, a massive development on the AI, artificial intelligence front. Elon Musk and more than a thousand fellow tech experts calling for a six month pause on giant artificial intelligence experiments. In an open letter, they warned, quote, AI systems with human competitive intelligence can pose profound risk to society. Powerful AI systems should be developed only once we are confident that their effects will be positive and their risks will be manageable. Our next two guests both signed that letter. Unanimous uh, AI chief, scientist and CEO Louis, Louis Rosenberg, along with Center for AI and Digital Policy President Mark Rotenberg, join us now live. One's on the East Coast, one's on the West Coast. Guys, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Lewis, uh, you're out on the West Coast right now. Explain for the folks, what is AI? What is artificial intelligence? And what can it do? What's your worry? Yeah, so AI in the broadest sense is when uh, computers can replace human level tasks. And uh, we've been working on that for, for decades and decades, but, but all of a sudden, very, very quickly, we're now on the verge of a, of a revolution, a, a revolution that, that where AI has the potential to change society in, in really large ways. Uh, it, it will be as big as the PC revolution, the internet revolution, mobile phone revolution, because in the very near future, we'll just talk to our computers and they'll talk back. And that's how we'll interact with a lot of our software. And that's, that's a really big change. And then we'll ask our computers to create content, documents, artwork, videos, uh, papers, music, and the computers will do it and it will do it with professional human level skills. And, and these two big changes, being able to talk to our computers and have our computers create human level content is a, a really significant change. And frankly, we're not, we're not quite ready for it yeah. because it's come, it's come at us so quickly. Sure, and, and Mark, because uh, Luce was just talking about human level changes, it's gonna knock a lot of people out of work. Yes, well, there's certainly labor implications. I mean, if you're an artist, for example, you're doing graphic images. If you're a musician, uh, people who write copy do marketing, uh, lawyers, a lot of text-based uh, jobs that we have now in the United States, I think, are going to be uh, threatened by some of these new tools. And there's really a very interesting question in this moment, which is whether this rapid adoption that's taking place is something that we're going to be able to manage right. as we've managed other transitions. So I think the call for the pause um, right now is, is exactly correct. It's, sure, it's and Mark, really your, your organization is actually filing a complaint with the federal government. Explain that. Yes, well, we worked uh, with the computer scientists in support of the petition. Then we thought, well, what's the practical next step that we can take and and we believe the practical next step is to go to the federal trade commission which does have authority to regulate commercial products and to say to the federal trade commission this is a commercial product it's called gpt there's a company open ai that's making it available for sale yeah we want the fc to basically suspend the future release until the guardrails that lewis was describing a moment ago are established right. when you have the safety in place then you go ahead and offer the product. Gotcha, okay. And, and Lewis, you know, for a lot of people over the last couple of weeks, they've seen the product of some AI. They've seen these images of Donald Trump uh, being arrested and stuff like that. And clearly they were computer generated, although they looked real. And then a couple of days ago, uh, images of the Pope, uh, and he was looking real hip and real young. And as it turns out, it's AI as well. You say that um, obviously going forward, because you can't tell what's real and what's fake, there's got to be like a like a watermark on things. So, you know, oh, OK, that's made up. Exactly. So uh, we're, we're getting to a point where the AI generated content is indistinguishable from from human content. And, and it actually also feels very authoritative in very in, in many ways. And so we need a way for the public to know what's what's real and what's right. synthetic and and one approach is to have a watermarks and require that that every ai system uh puts a watermark on synthetic content 
so that we can identify that it's not real and identify where it came from. Sure. And so again, it points to the fact that we need time to have watermark systems in place right. and also time to have regulatory bodies in place to require that these watermark systems be used. Well, the technology is just changing so fast and it's so amazing. Uh, Lewis and Mark, thank you very much for joining us and telling us why you signed that uh, take a pause uh, with AI. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.